A key question to ask you is, okay, is what I'm doing creating a sense of aliveness and connection between me and the people I'm working with? I can't tell you how good that feels. <laughs> if you're taking notes, I'm unbelievably flattered, but it's like so way too early in the morning for that. <laughs> Matt Weinstein. Motivate. Build a winning team. Have fun at work. People like to do business with people who like to do business. That's the secret of having fun at work. If I'm your customer in whatever industry you represent, of course I'm going to buy with my head. I'm interested in price, I'm interested in value, I'm interested in service, but I'm also going to buy with my gut. What does it feel like doing business with you? And an organization, an association, whose people are excited about coming to work, who feel appreciated, rewarded, recognized, who are on the phone like they're happy to be there, that has a huge competitive advantage. And it's the only way to maintain long-term relationships. So how do you do it? I would advise you, start small. Think about some of the specific people who you work with, and next time one of them goes away on vacation, maybe they're going away overnight on business to a meeting like this, maybe, maybe they're just going away for themselves on their personal time, fine. Find out what hotel they're staying in. Call up room service. Have a piece of cheesecake delivered to their room in the middle of the night. <laughs> with a little note attached to it saying, I'm thinking of you tonight. Are you thinking of me? <laughs> and don't even sign it. <laughs> Let them have their little fantasy life. Matt Weinstein is truly America's number one productivity coach. For 30 years, he has helped organizations large and small to energize their workforce, reduce stress on the job, and build winning market-shattering teams. Matt was honored by Successful Meetings Magazine as one of the 21 top speakers for the 21st century. I'm going to share these four principles with you right now. You don't have to write them down. You don't have to take any notes. I guarantee you I'm going to say you these principles one time. They're going to go right in your head. You're never going to forget these four principles as long as you live. So here they are. Principle number one, the principle about how you have to be an active participant in your own success, how success just doesn't happen out of the blue. We call that principle, row, row, row your boat. <laughs> success isn't just going to be handed to us. We're going to have to work for it. But fortunately, there are many, many, many different doorways into success. So what should you do first? You should do whatever's in front of you. If you do it with openness, if you do it with integrity, something's going to open up into a bigger, bigger sense of success. For example, if you're in a boat, it's pretty clear what you should do. You should row it. And you don't just row it once. You've got to row, row, row it pretty hard. See, you are not a minor character in the movie of your life. You're the star. You're the major star. And so you need to put yourself front and center if you want good things to happen for you. And give this group of your hardworking colleagues the most thunderous, the most spectacular standing ovation they've ever dreamed of. So let's hit it for them right now. Matt Weinstein is the foremost authority on fun and humor as a team-building skill. A best-selling author, his numerous books have taken the business world by storm. His concepts have been featured in news media all over the world, including the Los Angeles Times, the Wall Street Journal, the San Francisco Chronicle, the Denver Post, and PBS. Now, principle number two, the one about how there's a flow to your life and you have to go with that flow and not resist it. We call that principle gently down the stream. I see some of you are way ahead of me on this already. <laughs> I have the good fortune to work with a really wide variety of industries. And whenever I talk to them about team building, everybody says the same thing to me. Team building, fantastic priority for us. But what they really mean is, we're trying to build a sleekly muscled organization that goes out in the marketplace and kicks butt. Well, muscle is really important. But if that's all you concentrate on, you're going to burn out your best people. Just as important a priority as muscle is heart and soul. And that's exactly what this whole approach is about. Laughter, fun, play, aliveness, they're not an end in themselves, they're a way in 
to start making the, work, the workplace more nourishing, more supportive, so the people who you work with can really stay with you for the long run. Because what does everybody in this room already know? It costs a lot more money to recruit and train new people than it does to keep the people you already have on board happy and wanting to stay with you. So how do you do it? Four simple words. Work like your dog. You know, how many times have you heard somebody say, oh man, I've been working like a dog and my boss is working me like a dog. But the question is, you ever take a moment to notice how your dog does spend his day? I mean, where do we ever get that expression from? Huh? It'd be your lucky day if you could be working like your dog. And the fabulous thing for us to remember in this, in, in this respect is dogs don't even so the, know, know the difference between work and play because everything always looks like fun to them. Everything is new and fresh and it's like they're seeing it for the first time. I mean, you come home from a hard day at work, as soon as you open the front door, your dog is there in a flash. Eyes bright, tail wagging, every fiber of his being is going like, you came home! <laughs> I can't believe you actually came home! This is the most fantastic thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Every single day you come home from work, your dog is really excited to see you. But the best thing is 15 minutes later, you got the front door, you take out the garbage, you come back in the front door, your dog is still really excited to see you. Wouldn't it be great if you could walk into work first thing in the morning? <laughs> And the people on your staff would be that excited to see you. <laughs> well, that can actually happen once you learn the secrets of how to work like your dog, which was the subject of my previous book, Dogs Don't Bite When a Growl Will Do. Now, let me do, do a quick survey, a quick show of hands. How many people have had the opportunity to live with a dog at some time during your life so far? Okay, great. So you already have a pretty good inkling of what I'm talking about. Now, dogs are the greatest salespeople of all. The greatest salespeople in history. How do we know that? Look at the deal they've cut for themselves. <laughs> the reason dogs have such a great life is because they are totally customer focused. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to imagine that you're having a conversation with your boss or one of the members of your board. If you could pay attention to that person the way your dog pays attention to you, that person would leave the meeting with you feeling like a complete genius. Because dogs listen deeply, even when they don't understand. <laughs> and if I'm doing business with somebody who's excited about what she or he or she is doing, who's having fun at work, who's passionate about the product, well, you know what? When that person calls me up, that's the phone call I want to take. So how do you do it? How do you start using lay after fun, play to work, to bond with the other people on your team, to get a sense of support? Because what we found is people use fun at work, the stress level goes way down. There's a much stronger sense of team, of loyalty. Matt's dynamic presentations are filled with fantastic, phenomenal, and fun audience interactions, where your attendees are swept off their feet into an exciting group-oriented educational session. In addition to Matt's motivational team-building keynotes, his informative breakout sessions include the completely unique networking keynote, where attendees engage in upbeat communication and networking interactions through icebreakers, games, and other structured interactive activities. Principle number three, the one about how you have to have passion and vitality and aliveness in your life. We call that principle merrily, 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 merrily. Fun happens from the inside out. And you can look at any situation and find a way to bring more joy for yourself and the people around you. Now, for the last 30 years, my field of research has been fun at work. And especially in this idea of creating a corporate culture that supports laughter, play, fun, reward, recognition, celebration, you can't just wait for it to happen. You have to be an active participant, or else every company would be fun to work for, which we know is not the case. Hmm? Okay, can it happen in your association? Absolutely it can. How do I know that? Because it's happened in some of the least likely organizations. 
in the entire universe. For example, the Wells Fargo Bank. Right? Not anybody's idea of a happy-go-lucky institution. But they did a fantastic reward and recognition experiment. The cornerstone of which was they gave a $35 gift certificate to each of their employees. But here was the catch. You couldn't cash it in yourself. Instead, you had to in turn award it to the one person in the bank who had done the best job in supporting you in being excellent in your job. It was a true peer reward and recognition program. And there was no limit to how many of those any one person working behind the scenes could receive. Now, I know as executives, as managers, you're trying to see the good things that your people are doing, but there's only so deep into the organization that your vision can penetrate. When you empower your people to reward and recognize each other, you get a much deeper scope. See, I had a chance to do some work with the executive team at Crate and Barrel. You know that company, Crate and Barrel? They do kitchen supplies and housewares, right? And what I ask them is a question that I always ask when we do consulting with organizations, which is, who are the people who are not in the high profile reward and recognition positions? People don't get invited to a meeting like this, but nonetheless, they're dedicated to the success of the organization. And immediately, Al Chelly, who was the East Coast distribution manager, jumped up and he said, you know what? For us, it's the guys back in the warehouse. He said, those guys are the heart and soul of this organization, loading up the trucks day and night. Nobody even knows who they are. So he went back to the loading dock and he made a big banner that he put up over the loading dock that said, packed with pride. And then every time one of the teams finished loading up a truck, he would bring them over to the banner, pose them under it, and take a Polaroid photo of them and include it along with the shipment. So the people back at the stores, when they unloaded the trucks, they also unloaded a photo of the guys who had packed up the trucks for them. And all of a sudden, these empty trucks started coming back to the warehouse, filled with all these little toys and cards and gifts <laughs> for the guys back at the dock. One of the teams even took a Polaroid photo themselves, sent it back to the guys at the dock. They called it Unpacked with Pride. Well, notice what he had done. He had really expanded their sense of who was on their team. Matt has hundreds of excited repeat customers from every walk of life. Fortune 500 companies, international associations, and every industry vertical. As founder and artistic director of the motivational group Playfair, Matt has brought the same valuable business training in an even more interactive environment to college students, youth organizations, and forward-thinking companies, associations, and government agencies. Matt's Playfair organization presents over 400 dynamic team building programs every year. And principle number four, everybody say it with me, life is but a dream. Perfect. Now, let's take a look at these four principles in a little more detail. Reality is mostly a matter of opinion. Nothing is for sure. And people, instead of choosing to make their life a dream, so often make the opposite choice and create a nightmare for themselves. A lot of our life is about making choices. And in fact, making your life a dream is really a summation of the first three. Because if, if you really do go, row, row, row that boat, and anything that happens you see is an opportunity. And you do practice going gently down the stream, and you know that pretty much anything that happens, happens for the purpose of turning you into your own true self. And if you really do go merrily, 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 merrily down, the, down that stream and you're an unending source of joy and inspiration for the people around you, then you know what? Your life at work really can be a dream come true. If you want to take your organization or even your entire industry to the next level, teach them to motivate, to build a winning team, to have fun at work. You need Matt Weinstein. If you really do follow those first three principles, then I guarantee you, your life at work really can be a dream come true. Thank you so much for this chance to be with you this morning.